it's been six, six months since I was last here. And so it's only been six months since we moved to Hawaii. And I can tell you I don't miss the winter at all. Um, <laughs> so there are, some, there are some challenges living in Hawaii. It's very expensive to live there, but, it, but it's also one atmosphere, very good people. And uh, it's good to be at one of, one of the BYUs for sure. It was always my goal to be involved in, in, in somehow in, in, in education, um, but uh, so, somewhere in the Lord's uh, kingdom in education. So uh, it's a, re a really fun challenge. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background. Firstly, just myself. Um, I, I actually came back to school after um, about 15 years in the information, information technology sector. I started off as a programmer. Uh, so I, I started off life as a, a geek, I suppose, and I just loved programming from a, from a young age. And I did that as a career and ended up uh, running my own uh, software business called Alma Systems. Um, the reason I called it Alma Systems was twofold. Um, one, because I, w you know, I wanted people to ask me, you know, where does that name come from, so that, uh, that I could have gospel discussion, and nobody ever did, so that's the way. And, and secondly, it was, it w it was uh, A, so it was at the beginning of the phone book if people were looking up software, but um, neither of those really worked. My company failed. Anyway, uh, so uh, I, I worked for the church for a while in, in IT in, in Europe and Africa, and uh, eventually, uh, after... Uh, many things, and I had a, a bunch of spiritual experiences that uh, where the Lord decided he was going to send me back to school, move my uh, family across from England to the States, and I c came back and started from the beginning, and at 32 years old, was a, was a fresh, freshman in my bachelor's degree here at Provo, and I did my bachelor's, my master's, my PhD, which incidentally, I'm actually only defending uh, this Friday, uh, so that's, that's kind of the end of that, that story, coming back to school, and so part of this, what I want a theme I want to run through this presentation is, a lot of this is not to do with necessarily any ideas I've had, but, but the Lord was involved in this. He's the one who sent me back to school, and he's the one who has the answers, and not me. Um, so then, so with all of that experience in information technology, I started uh, in the, back in the field of education, and eventually ended up um, being asked uh, by the Department of IPNT to create an on online class. And this is going back, um, I think this was, it was for winter 2008. So we're going back a couple of years. And it was, uh, it was Dr. Graham, he, he's what he, at the time he was running the, uh, the 286-287 program <coughs> where we teach uh, student teachers how to use it, um, technology in their teaching. And uh, I guess there was a need for an online version of that class. And so he just asked me to, if I'd be willing to create one. And so, so I started thinking about it. And, and well, we didn't have much time to create that class. I think I had the, uh, maybe a, a month before the semester started. But I kind of came up with a crazy idea that, that came from some, some, uh, a long time ago, and the, and the origins for the idea, I'll quickly go, go into this, was I was serving as a branch president in Warwick in England for several years before coming back to the States, and uh, right at the beginning of that, I was really interested in starting up the, the daily seminary program. Um, I joined the church when I was 19, and one of the things I experienced when I first joined the church was I went with a friend to, to early morning seminary, which I thought was the most wonderful program I, I've ever experienced. It was just this warm, fuzzy, spiritual event that these... The, the, these youth would get early in the morning. And the weekly seminary program has its, has its benefits, but is nowhere near as powerful as that daily um, powerful spiritual experience. So I wanted to have it for my branch, and it was really difficult because of the, the, the spread out nature. So for, the fir for, for a year, I, I tried m my best to go and pick everybody up, um, because people didn't have, um, not many people had cars in my area, and take them into town and, and get, sit with them for seminary, and then take them back to, so they could be dropped off to school, and, and that was really unsustainable. It was a great experience, but right at that time was when webcams were first coming out as, as a brand new technology, and because I was a technology person, I saw that, and I thought, ooh, wouldn't that be interesting if we could do something for a seminary? Because I still had kids, even when I was driving them in, some kids were just so far out, they just couldn't get in. I thought to myself, what if they could sit there at home and at least observe and hear um, the, the, daily, the early morning se seminary experience? And nothing ever happened with that. It was just an idea that um, it, it, time wasn't right. Everybody was on dial-up, and I just didn't have, it just didn't happen. But it was an idea that stuck in my mind. And when I first came back into school, into, into, my, master, into my master's and PhD, that was the first thing I thought of. I, I, I'd like to use video in education. But um, I was actually told to, to or uh, advised not to, go, not to think about that too much, because a lot of people had done um, studies in live video, and there'd been problems, or it was, I can't remember what I was told, but I didn't think about it for a while. But when I was finally asked to do this online class, that, that idea came back. I'd like to use video. But some, something different in my mind had changed, because over the time I'd been uh, here, away from my family in England, we'd, we'd, we'd used Skype and videos to try and keep in contact. 
But my experience has been that every t almost every time I tried to have a live video conversation, something would go wrong. Somebody would freeze, the sound would go off, or it wasn't the right time of day. And I started changing my pattern of communication with my family. I started just recording videos of the kids doing stuff and then just sending it. And, and that seemed to be just as efficient for, for keeping uh, our, our relationships established. And so my, my parents could see the grandkids, and, and that seemed to be just as good, in my opinion. So when it came to, do, to this class, I just thought, I wonder if that, that pattern of recorded video could function in, in an online class. Because the, uh, the premise I came from <coughs> was, I don't want to lose the good stuff you have in a face-to-face in -face class if we do online. And to me, the good stuff is the, the, uh, the immediacy, the, the social presence, the relationships. And, and, I, and I felt like you needed to see and hear each other to achieve this. So that's why I was really interested in keeping, having some way of, of having the, the, the visual and, and, and audio aspect. But at the same time, with an with a online class, I was convinced that you needed to keep it flexible enough for students, and so it needs to be asynchronous. <coughs> so here's these two challenges I had. I wanted a social presence, a visual social presence, and I wanted it to be asynchronous to keep flexibility. Um, and so I just had this idea. I wonder if this, this way I've been communicating with my family would work. So, so we tried this pilot um, the first semester where um, we just basically used technologies like a movie maker or whatever they had on their, their, their computers to record videos. And the students, um, right at the beginning of the semester, I, I did a video of myself rec recording an introduction that the whole, the whole class watched. It was just a few minutes. I introduced myself, a bit about myself, the objectives of the class, um, shared my testimony with them. And then, um, and, 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 and you can blame Dr. Graham. It's all his fault, as I was explaining. And, uh, and then the students were required to watch it and then record their own introductions um, back to me uh, and send them by, in an email attachment. And then as soon as I got them, I recorded a response back to them. So in the first week of class, they'd seen me, I saw them, and then I had a response back. And then several times during the semester, I think it was only actually three times that semester, their assignments, instead of writing assignments um, or giving written responses, we, we asked them to do video responses. So they gave their responses in video format, and then I, g I gave them personalized feedback for every one of them. So this was the first time that this had been tried, and, and we were all a bit nervous how, how it would go. But uh, it turned out to be very successful in, in the sense that um, our f the first thing we were trying to establish is, could we, could we establish a relationship? Could there be immediacy? Could, could the students sense the, the stuff about me, and could I sense the stuff about them you get when you're face to face? And, and as we, we just talked to the students and, and when we, we read the comments on the ratings and, and the other things we were able to gather that semester, the answer was they loved it. They, they really did. In fact, they liked it more than the face-to-face -face class. And, and there were, there were, some, there were some, a lot of other advantages in the online class we found, not, not necessarily tied to this, but for example, we started using screencasts for a lot of the, the technology training, which turned out to be a more powerful tool than I was personally as a, as a teacher, so I had to eat some humble pie um, anyway. So there were a lot of things about the class that worked really well. So it was an interesting pilot. So then we took it from there. And, so, and that was, it was difficult that first semester because we were using, um, students were recording videos themselves. And then they were e emailing the attachments. And so there were some technical difficulties. A lot of students didn't even know what it mean, meant to record a video file. If you do stuff like that a lot, it just seems like very simple. But if you've never done it before, even the, the, the principle of a video file being somewhere on your computer, it, it didn't make sense to some students. And then, and, then, and then others didn't understand that you can't email a, a 400 megabyte file. You know, there, there, so there were some technical difficulties we had with the first semester. But it worked out okay because, because it was a pilot, because I was interested, I was on top of all of that and solved all the problems. But I re realized um, very quickly that um, that wasn't sustainable. But um, curiously enough, at that exact time period, what we saw emerging were, were, were free software tools on the internet that did exactly what I wanted, needed. Which, uh, and it's termed video mail on the internet, and it's, that's a fairly common term now. Out of interest, how many of you see, have seen Talkbox or heard of Talkbox.com? Okay, so that's T-O-K-B-O-X.com. Um, this is, a, in effect, a... Um, I'll give it up. That's, uh, it's kind of like a, an email, uh, like a Hotmail account, but with video mail. And uh, this is one of the, the technologies we found. I think my net idea will work anymore. No. 
And uh, you basically have an, in an inbox and an outbox, but it's just video. So it uses your webcam. If you've got a webcam, you can pull it up and record a message and say, press send, and it sends it to somebody. It? So that takes care of all the issues of where a file is or where it's sent to. And there was another one called freegabmail.com, and no point looking that one up because it's, it's since gone out of, um, they don't, it's not used anymore. And that was a shame because that was a very simple technology. And, and around about that time, Facebook started doing it as well. So Facebook started having this uh, video mail um, addition to their, to their communication. Um, I'm, I'm getting my terminology. They've got a, um, wherever you do your mess you sort of their message um, functionality, you could add a video to it. So it was really in interesting when you think about the timing for all of this, that the, the, the technologies were emerging that, that, could, that could do it. So for the next semester, we used some of these technologies. And then we asked, because I worked at the CTL at the time, um, I thought it might be an idea to have CTL design our own version of a video mail system that, that was called a CTL video blog. And, and we used that for the, for the, the next time, time we did it. So the technology was evolving all the time. And uh, so, th so this is top box. You just basically have a, uh, in, an inbox of videos. And these are all inboxes of videos. And... Uh, and then if you want to send one, you just, they send a video message, and it starts recording you, and when you're ready, you just send. So it's very simple. It took away you know, a lot of the technical barriers we would experienced the first semester, made it easy. So, so all of these, these innovations were great. And eventually, after doing several pilots, and that's what I studied for my dissertation, when Andrea actually was the teacher who, um, who taught a class with this model that I was developing called the asynchronous um, video learning model and implemented it without me doing it. So it was the first time it had been done by any, anybody other than myself. And there were some other people, so um, Carrie was, all, was also, um, what's Carrie's last name? I'm forgetting. Johnson. Carrie Johnson was also doing some pilots using some, some video features in the classes she was doing. So it was an interesting time of, of, of learning and we learned lots of things and um, we found some weaknesses. And, but eventually this is the uh, about a year ago was when BYU Hawaii were, were trying to hire a director for their, their, their online program or to, to create their online program. And they hired me for that. And then when I got there, I was able to implement the, this kind of principle of asynchronous video into the online program there and, and create a, create, start creating classes. So that's what I'm going to talk about now. So the, I, I can stop the questions if there's any questions so far. Go ahead. What they okay, so so the responses they gave were some of the responses where I got to know my teacher better than I did in my in my face to face classes, and I wasn't expecting that. I I wasn't. What we were observing was trying to see if we could create a relationship, and it was very quickly established. Yes, you can. Video the asynchronous video can do it. That was the first question. But when they said that, I was surprised until I realised it makes sense because. They got more face time, individualized face time from me than you would normally get in a, in a classroom. And that was just a few times <coughs> this semester. If, um, and now that the, the, the program is to do is to have every, every week there's, there's video feedback from the tutor, which is way more than you'd be likely to get in a face-to-face -face class. And the technology allows that to happen that way. So students really liked that. They, they really liked, um, they felt that they, they were known. They felt that they were cared about, and, and it was obvious to them through, through that mechanism. So that, that's not just the technology, but that's, that's the model of the, the feedback that, that I'm going to explain. Okay. What about beyond just the teacher and the student connecting and students connecting to other students? That's a great question. The first semester we didn't do it. I mean, it was just brand new, so we just did um, student to teacher. And we established that work very well. When we did the, the next pilots, we tried to do having students um, um, do some work together. And, I, and when I show you the screens, it'll make sense how we do this. But we had students... Uh, in, in certain assignments, they were supposed to give their uh, responses, and then they were then supposed to respond to um, two other students and, and articulate what they had said. And, and that worked okay, except for we made some mistakes how we set up the class. So students didn't feel like they had connected with other students. But that was because in the first week of class, we still did the, the, the instructor and video. The students did an introduction to the instructor, and the instructor gave, a, gave feed, feedback. So in the first week of class, what we really established is the relationship is the teacher and the student. 
and the, and the student feedback told us that. They, 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 felt, they said that when they were doing the, the student um, peer assignments, that they, they felt like they were talking to the teacher about the students and not to the students. And one, one of the weaknesses was we had kind of set them up to, to that way by, by right at the beginning saying, talk to your teacher and, and the teacher gives you feedback. So what we decided to do and what we do now in BYU Hawaii is students introduce themselves to each other in the first week of class as well as to the teacher. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, did you, you had another question there, I think. I was just going to say, I, I find you very amiable, and maybe your personality uh, was what connected you to the students versus maybe some of their other teachers. I don't know. <laughs> um, I, that's a good question. It's a great question. And my theory on that is, well, what I've observed is whatever, you, whatever you've got, that's what the students will pick up on. So uh, my theory is you need to have caring, amiable teachers with the right personality. So it'll make sense when I explain the model we have at Hawaii, but I, I deliberately hire people that, that are like that, who I feel are gen genuinely like that, because whatever you've genuinely got, that's what the students will get. Uh, so, so it's just positive and negative. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and like I said, Andrea taught the first, the first time it wasn't me, and she has a different personality style than I have. Um, very friendly, friendly, but we're different, so there was, we, we could see the differences between it, and it still functioned. Um, what we observed is, how, the, as far as student ratings are concerned, they go up. So whatever you've got, it enhances in it. Go ahead. Um, my opinion is it's the visual. It's the visual audio. It's the, it's the um, <coughs> non-verbal signals. It's the immediacy. And immediacy is the term, term that we, we've been using. And immediacy is the non verbal and non-verbal signals you get from somebody who, who, who genuinely cares about your education and, and lets you know that. So it's, it's the nods and the smiles and, the, the, and the, just the way you move your eyes. So you know, all, the, all of that stuff makes a difference. And so if, you, if you're good at that, if you really care, then, it's, then this, this sends it, and you get it, even though you're not face to face. And, and then my, my opinion, what, what I came, the conclusion I came to after that was, what we've done is, we've taken what's, what I like about face to face. And face-to-face face isn't perfect for all things. It doesn't have much flexibility. You've got to be at the right place at the right time. Um, and there's some other weaknesses with it. Um, and then you've got a distance education, which has lots of flexibility, but has the weaknesses that it doesn't have, the sociality and the, the, uh, the immediacy of face-to-face. -face. And, and I felt like we, could, we had something that was that kind of pulled some important elements of both and made it possible. Go ahead. Um, I'm not teaching anything now, so, um, but, but the cl first pilots we did, this was to student teachers learning how to Im uh, implement technology in teaching. The classes we now have in BYU Hawaii, I'll show you in a second, uh, just we're developing any general education class. And, but it does that's a good question, though, um, because I do think it depends. I don't think you can do all classes uh, with the same, the same model, but um, you can do a lot of them. So l let's bring right back to... And I'm going fast because I know we're running out of time. While you're going to that, I'll just uh, say for <coughs> the graduate students in here to benefit, that this question that Keith had of, well, do you, you know, is the secret sauce the fact that Mike is, <coughs> yeah, <laughs> that he, that he really knows how to connect with students. And that was actually the concern that his dissertation committee had. That's why he couldn't teach the class that he was he's investigating for his committee to see if you know if those principles hold beyond just the uh, Mike's personality. Right. So. Right. Yeah. Is this be created by the fact that you are right there in front of your webcam all the time trying to communicate with students, or when are you communicating? Okay, so it's asynchronous, which means that um, it's, it's totally whenever you whenever you get to it and you see it and you respond you respond to it. There's there's going to be a time issue, and this hasn't been fully researched. I don't know what the time limit is. When I was doing my pilots, I was I was trying to um, respond as as fast as I could, so, uh, and I did that for two reasons. I thought it was the right thing to do, and I think students appreciate fast feedback, especially in the, the modern world where everything is now, every, everything is instant feedback. Uh, but the second reason is I wanted to keep a clear desk. 
I, don't, I didn't want to have things stacked up. So I'd just respond whenever I was online. And so what, what people would ask, teachers would ask, doesn't it take more time? You're responding to every student all the time with the video. It, it actually doesn't. It, it didn't take more time to me. I find it easier to do a video fe feedback than I, to watch a video and do video feedback. I can do it very fast. Um, as you might have observed, I kind of enjoy talking right, more, more than writing. And uh, by the way, is, is the speaker working at the back? Yeah. <coughs> because. Oh, it's gone, that's why. Yeah, it was at the beginning. I'm sorry about that. I always had a very quiet voice, and so I've always made up for it by quantity. <laughs> and, uh, and anybody who's had me in a class will, is giggling for that reason. Um, I'm sorry, what was the question again? So we're talking about time. Um, I think time is really important, but, that but for me... All right, so, so teachers would ask, would it take more time? And I said, no, it didn't, but it changed the way I worked. So, you, so it, if, you were gonna, if you wanted to do a nine-to-five job and fixed, it might take you more, it might feel like it's more time uh, because you, it might be difficult to do it in a stack. But if you're, if you're, if you're doing it um, bits at a time, to me, it didn't take any extra time. And it, w it helped me keep my desk clear, so I felt a lot better doing it that way, personally. But I would because I started it and it was my thing. So I recognize it might not be that way for everybody. And so for teachers, it would be a personal choice whether they liked it that way. But that's why at uh, Hawaii, um, one of the things we do is we don't use teachers to do the feedback. We use tutors who are students. And I'll, I'll explain that whole plan. So I'm gonna, everything is on Blackboard in uh, BYU Hawaii. But uh, all of our video stuff has been programmed again out there um, to log into it. So I'm going to sign in as a student so you can see this. And I'm going to sign in as... I, my son is, is, is a student right now, so I'm, I have his password. Well, actually, that's a funny thing, and I got hard to get used to. BYU Hawaii plays in red. And I was really confused when I first got there. I didn't know what to do. Um, that's interesting. Okay, and just like you're familiar with Blackboard, their classes appear on the left and on the right, sorry. And uh, so in the first semester, so I was there in June, in the first semester we were able to get uh, five, six classes ready for, for the fall. So in fall 2009, we, we were able to get six classes online. We had a student development class, we had a biology 100 class, um, we had a couple of religion <coughs> classes, I'm, forget, I'm forgetting the rest of the list that was there then. And then, and then for this semester, we've just start, started winter with 15 cl um, G classes. And uh, th um, three of the classes are here. So we'll look at biology 100. Actually, no, let's look at religion. Sister Black, uh, Su Susan Black was on campus in summer. And this is, I, I literally had just turned up, and it was my second day there. And I was walking to my office, and I saw um, Sister Black and, 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 and Harvey Black uh, walking across campus. And I said, what are you doing here? And, and she, uh, Sister Black said, I'm here teaching a class. And I, and I didn't even know whether I could do this at this point. I just got there. I said, can we film you? Um, and she said, sure. So we filmed her class for the whole semester. And as you know, that's the, she's a storyteller. So her class is telling <coughs> stories. So I thought, this would be great. Film the whole class and put it online. So that's what we did. So this class is a, an online class. And all of our classes right now, you have to jump to another link to get, to, uh, to get what we've programmed. So this is what students get. On the, uh, on the left here, students get a, a chat box to chat with their students. In the middle, this is where they get their video feedback from the tutor. So this is private feedback. When we first um, did this, so when I first did it, I was sending email attachments. And then we were using um, TalkBox, and then we were using the CTL video blog. Um, and, but when I first got to Hawaii, the way we did it is we it was just took a long time to program, so they had a link on, on their homepage saying, click here for your private videos, but students weren't going there. 
Uh, a lot of them just didn't even realize they had feedback. So, they, um, so, so we changed it in this semester. They get it right in front of their, their face as soon as they turn up. So they get a thumbnail. Well, I'm not sure why that isn't. OK, so this is a, a, a tutor f feedback. To it, and I just want to do the response for your uh, two videos assignments that you submit to me, which is week two and week three. Um, so this is uh, Gokul Sapal, who's from Cambodia. She's one of our tutors. And this is another, it's the thing about um, BYU Hawaii that's going to be different is there's just a lot of accents, a lot of different cultures, because it's, it's very multinational. There's students from over 70 countries there. So we have a lot of issues with language and such like. So some of our tutors um, are, uh, are from other countries. But, so when I, when I interview them, they have to have good enough, good enough <coughs> English, but they're not necessarily all uh, n native English speakers. So they get these um, <coughs> feedback responses every week, and they just see them uh, right in front of them. If we put a video over here, it's, it's a video from the prof uh, professor or tutor for the whole class. So then they, they just have this calendar. We try and make it simple. So they have this calendar or the syllabus with just links to, to the things they're going to have to do in the class. And I'm just going to go straight to, well, the, so the, let me show you the first week. So the first week, uh-oh, you don't want to see that. I did a... Uh, I did a 10-minute video explaining stuff about the online class that I recognized had been missed the previous semester, and then, so that's just to help them understand things. But they, uh, they just get an introduction to class, and typically the, there would be a video from the tutor on this page. I guess that wasn't in there for this class. But uh, then for the students themselves, they get this assignment which says, basically, introduce yourself, and then pick two other people and respond to them. The way we've designed this is you've got these buttons at the top here where you can rec record a video or you can upload a video from your camera. Um, and the only thing about that is students have to, have to learn that they can't upload a 200 me megabyte file. So as long as they understand that, they can upload a file and, uh, or they can record it straight from their webcam. If they record it straight from their webcam, use a technology called VMAS dot, uh, from vmas.com, which is... Um, this is a Java applet. We had some problems with, with the, uh, the Flash applications. If you've seen TalkBox or if you've seen the way that Facebook do it or any of the other ones, they basically all use the same technology, which is a streaming rec recording to a server somewhere. So they use either um, um, Flash me, um, server or they use um, Red5, which is a free server. And basically what's happening is you've got a server somewhere in the world and you've got a webcam somewhere else in the world. And, and when they click record, it's recording the video t and being recorded on the server, <coughs> which, which means that's fine as long as your bandwidth is really good and it's, and it's constant. But if there's a blip, there's a blip in the, in, in, the, in the picture or the sound or something. We had problems with that, especially for in the countries with low bandwidth um, issues. So we found this one, which is a, a Java applet. So this records the video to your desktop, and then when you're done, it sends it. So it doesn't matter if the sending takes a bit longer, as long as you've captured the right quality. So that's what this is. And all you do is you click record, and when you're done, you, um, you click stop, and then you, you put your name in, and you click save. And that's all you do. And if you do that, it, it will appear at the top of the page as the, as, the, as the newest video. And you can play them, and they're playable right from here. I'm not going to look at all of those, but and then, but you need to notice there's also buttons on the videos, and if you click one of these, the same window comes up, but when you send it, it's going to place it to the right-hand side. So this is a thread, so this is a response to this. So as we go down, we'll see... Student responses. What's funny about this, or fun to look at. The students love it. I mean, they get really into it. They talk to each other, and they, the sociality is re really uh, interesting to watch. And, and they pick out things the others have said, and they, they, they match interests and tell them what they've got in common. So it, it works really well. Um, the only th the weakness of this, I've seen, I don't know if it is a weakness. Um, you can tell me what you think. But what I find is that you get some students that get like 20 responses, and others that get none. So now, partially, that's timing. If you're one of the first ones to do it, you're going to get more responses. But um, I kind of feel bad for the students who've got, uh, got no responses. For example, my son is actually 14. He's, he's a science geek. Um, so he, he's so far advanced just in, just in science, not in everything else, that he, that he can do the, this, this level of, of class. But because he's 14 and he's cute, he's got like this whole long list of responses from, from all the girls in the class. And, 
lucky so and so. Never had that when I was at school, but. Um. <laughs> How do you mean stealing it? What? Or still, what? Are you still what? there? Oh. Are you? What software is it? Okay, this is, this is just, this has been built by us in, in Hawaii. This is uh, perfectly built. Yeah. yeah. It goes through Blackboard. With Blackboard, you may not know this, you can pass variables from Blackboard to another web page. It's, it's not a well-known uh, feature of Blackboard, and we had to kind of hunt around to find it. But I can send the user ID and the course ID and the role of the user out of Blackboard. So they go into Blackboard and click on links in Blackboard. And as far as they're concerned, it's Blackboard managing it, but it isn't. It's, it's on our own, our own server. <coughs> and um, and uh, we're going to we're gonna have some issues with technology just from um, file storage. We've got 15 classes, and we'll probably have about 60 gig, maybe 100 gig of video files this semester. So it's uh, so we have, but uh, uh, disk storage is cheaper than it's ever been before. So I'm not that worried about that. But anyway, you get the picture, and this this model can be used. This is introductions, but we can use it for a class discussion. We can we and we can we can make up different things. So the first time we did that, we said to a student, uh, watch the most recent. So so whenever you come into the into the conversation, watch the most recent post. In fact, the most recent two. Uh, and in your post, you're going to talk about what the f this person A said, person B said, and then uh, analyze what they said and add your own idea. So we actually solved one of the problems I have with, with online group work, which is um, if, if you try and have a, a set group in an online class, which is an asynchronous class, there's a lot of management involved in deciding who's going to be in the group and managing the group. Where with, by accident, what we discovered is you can have a group that is a self-selective group based on time. So it's still a group of three. It's just whenever you get there, you pick your group. And that solved that whole problem. So that was, that was nice. But, but you could probably think up a thousand different ways of doing that. It's just uh, the technology now allows you to have a post and responses. We could say, student A, we could say, post something. We could say, to, uh, somebody's got to respond. And we could say, this person's going to respond back afterwards. And, and say, maybe you've got to have a conversation of five responses to each other. And, and that's the assignment. And uh, you, could, you could do that. You could... Pick, you could say watch five and respond to them and, and, then, and then do, do your, a synthesis of what you've learned, of what, what they've told you. And one of the, one of the weaknesses we, um, I think we overcame, and I don't think there's a perfect world in, in education, so in face-to-face, -face, for example, you can have great lively debates and you can have um, um, a lot of ideas come out and, it, and, it's, and it's, you can build energy and it's, and it's great. But I don't think I've ever been in a class where everybody participates to equal degree and where there isn't you know, somebody who dominates, some, some person talks a lot like me and then people who are quiet who might have better ideas but don't talk a lot <coughs> and that's, that's, a, that's a weakness of a face-to-face -face class um, especially as they get larger. In the online version what we've got is students expressing their ideas to the class and every single one of them is required to do it and, and every single one of them is res required to respond. So everybody wa watches and learns from another student and everybody um, uh, is, is, is giving their own uh, ideas or, um, or answers. And we have two ways of doing this. So I'll explain the other thing that we came to. Uh, there's just, and please stop if you want to ask questions. I'm going really fast because there's a lot to get in. They, we had some weaknesses in the first semester of doing this at BYU Hawaii where we had, we had classes where we'd do this, but we'd also do Blackboard quizzes. And oh, the other thing <coughs> is, you want, let me show you the actual <coughs> videos themselves. So in this class, it's very simple. Students watch videos and respond in two ways. One, one is a simple multiple choice blackboard quiz, and the other one is each, uh, each week they have a video response where I'll show you the questions in a second. But the videos themselves are stored on a server called um, flix.com. That's F-L-I-Q-Z. Don't put S there. You'll get a bad website, as we found out a few times. And, uh, and they, just, uh, they just play these videos and watch Sister Black tell her stories, which are fantastic. Uh, we, we know that in pre-existence, there was a council held in heaven. There is ultimately a war. And uh, for those of us that decided... And she's a great storyteller, so this works really well in, in video. I wouldn't normally like to have a class that's just video presentation, but um, this works well. So the students watch her videos, they learn tons, they take a quiz, they do a video response. So the, so the video response, for example, for week two... says, record a video essay of at least two minutes, answering the following. 
And so we give them these, these definite questions. And then, the, so the tutor, their job is to watch all of these student videos one at a time and give a response. And they, they have a different button. The tutors, when they see this, they, they're, they're, this button is replaced with one that says tutor response. And if they click that, um, it's, it's a, the video they record will go to the, to the student's private page automatically. So they, all they have to do is play, play it and then click on that to give the, the feedback. So it's a very fast process. Um, the only thing slow about it is it's, then they have to go and manually type in the grade into Blackboard, Blackboard but we're working on that. So, so that's the kind of assignments they do. Now this one is just a student doing it themselves. In the Book of Mormon class we have, they're required to respond to each other and discuss each other's um, points of view. But so that's, a, that's a, 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 a format where the whole class sees it and they can all respond to each other. The other format is what we call a, a video quiz or a video test. So what happened is the first semester, last semester, we, we had in the biology class, the students were supposed to read some materials, watch some videos, and then do a, do a blackboard quiz just to make sure they, they got the, the understanding of the materials first. And then they went on to do some problem-based um, and, and assignments, which were really good. But what we found out is that students weren't, weren't reading it at all. Half the students were going straight to Google, opening Google up and opening quiz up at the, uh, quiz up at the same time and just answering the quiz <coughs> questions straight from Google. Uh, and I've got nothing against using Google as a learning tool, as, as if it's a learning tool. In this case, it was just a, a fast track to, to get the, uh, the quiz points, and students weren't learning, any, learning any, anything. And we, had a, we had a couple of mature students, non-traditional students, we call them here, who, um, uh, in England, we call them mature students because we're, you know, we don't, we're not so politically correct. And uh, they, uh, they came to me and said, this isn't fair. My students come and tell me how to do this, and I'm reading all of the chapters. And, and uh, anyway, so... We changed it so that now they have to do what we call a video test, which is we take, we've taken the multiple choice questions and turned them into, instead of um, what are the, f um, name the three, or is it four, stages of mitosis, A, B, C, or D, now they have to explain the, what happens in, in the, the stages of mitosis. And we've made it, actually made it harder because now you have to explain. And let me go to that so you can see it. And they can't read, and they have to look directly at the camera when they do it. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the biggest questions that, uh, let me go back one second, I'm, I'm jumping around all over the place, but in BYU Hawaii they've decided their online program is going to be th through the departments, it's not separate like independent study is, um, Idaho are doing things kind of integrated, kind of separate, in Hawaii they decided this is going to be in the, within the departments. So. Um, I'm running the department that creates and delivers the classes, but I have to go through departments to get there, there okay, and I have to have a professor who is going to be the professor of the class. So they, they, there's ownership of a, a professor, um, which means that they can choose to do it or not to do it. That, that's that's the, their, their choice. There's, there's, no, there's a university kind of plan, but um, it's, it's invitational. It's, it's, not a, it's not mandated. So, so I spent a lot of my life uh, negotiating and uh, promoting the program. And, and some departments just have decided they don't like the idea, and that's, that's their choice. Go ahead. Is there a certain amount of minimum training that you have to provide to professors to get them up to par? Right. The answer is no. The professors don't. This is, this is my, my message. I'm kind of, um, my perspective on technology and, and such like is, if it feels like it's a burden, people don't want to do it. So my, my, my job is to remove the burden completely. So from prof to professors, the message is you won't have to do anything. We'll do it all for you. And what we do with professors, we say, you've got a class. We don't, we don't, the reason why it was so fast to design these classes is we do not redesign classes. We give the, the professor credit for having spent the last 20 years designing their form of education. Um, and that's a different way of doing it to, to most online education designs. So we say, give us your syllabus, give us your materials, give us, tell us how you teach and the order you do it in and what kind of assignments you like. And the first thing we do is we plodge that into Blackboard as close as, as possible to its original intent. And then we, see, then we look at it and we say, okay, what things don't work anymore that used to work face to face? And we, then we try and um, give clever, clever ways to, to, to resolve that. So class discussions, for example, now you see the ways that we would suggest to the professor, here's the way we think we can get, get, get at your objective for this. So that they still might be reading, they still might be doing some written assignments, but we, we, we ask the professor to do as many of these video assignments as possible. And the reason for that is because one of their biggest fears for online education is the security. And that's why we have testing centers, is to make sure that students are not, are not uh, copying or cheating. Uh, especially, here's an interesting um, fact, in, in Asia, um, the idea of um, 
cheating is kind of reversed because uh, plagiarism is, is reversed for them. In the Asian culture, it's good not to cite somebody. It's, uh, it's okay to just copy somebody's stuff and put it in your work because they put the responsibility on the reader to be smart enough to know where it came from. <laughs> and so it's totally reversed. The responsibility here is on the writer to tell you where it came from. So they don't even understand. It. So they have to, it's really hard for them to change their paradigm. So we have issues with that. So, so the video helps us be sure that the student is the one doing it. And they could hire a body double, I suppose, but they'd have to do it like for a whole semester. That'd be kind of expensive. Um, and if somebody wants to cheat that much, you're not going to stop them, no matter what you do. So, so we have these video tests. And the other way is, <laughs> this is the whole point to the looking at the camera thing. And they really didn't like it the first semester. But um, it was kind of unfair. We actually changed it mid-semester because there was so much of this not non-learning going on that we said, that's it. We're, we're, ch we're changing it. And we did the, uh, the video quiz. Well, I'm not sure she's seen it in its full glory yet. She loved the idea, and she, we were developing it as she was there. And so um, I need to share it to her while, while I'm here. But, um, she, uh, but she, was, she was fully into it. And it works for her method of teaching, though. It, it works. Her presentation technique is storytelling, and that works very well on a video. It, it, if you've got, with video, my perspective is this. If you're, if, you're a, if you're an entertaining teacher, video is great. If, you're not, if your style is, is not entertaining style, it's another method. And there's great, every, different styles work in different um, situations. I'm not in favor of one style over another. Um, but, but that's my favorite for video, I think. that Because we've got some videos they did before I got there of a class as they were tr trying to do some balance before I was there, where they had a teacher who was looking into a video camera and reading the script. And it was just, you, you'd fall asleep within seconds of, of watching it. So we, had to, we just scrapped it. It just wasn't going to work. So, so in this class, now, now what we do is we give them the questions. And this, one, this week two is a bad example because it's just very easy. So let me go to week three, week four. We actually tell them the questions in advance because we're going to give them fewer questions but make them more responsible. So we give them these eight questions. And we say, you can study for these in any format you like. You can use the book. Here's the online book that we've got. Uh, and it's, um, by the way, one of my other goals is to have uh, no, no, no textbooks, no cluster textbooks. So we try and find online resources if possible. So they've got this online textbook. We give them these videos to watch from, uh, from YouTube or other places. And then when they're ready, they go to the video quiz page. So they can write their notes. They can take notes. They can rehearse as much as they like. But once they get to this point, the instructions are, this is closed, closed book. And you must not read from any notes or any other materials at any time. You must be looking at the camera the whole time. Last, the first time we did this, we said, you must not look away from the camera. <laughs> and the students, were, that terrified them. And uh, we said, you can't even blink. No, we didn't say that. But the, um, they look, and they did it, but they said afterwards it was hard because they, it was hard to think when you can't even look away. So in this, we've said, uh, you have to look at the camera except to briefly read. So you ha you ha we said you could read the questions, so they can look away to read the questions. So question one says, da da da, my answer is, so they have to look at the camera. Um, now we said you may also briefly look up or away or close your eyes to help remember details while you're trying to answer a question. <laughs> so, uh, but, we, the, but the tutors know, f know full well if, if, they, if they look away for a long time and. Uh, and uh, <laughs> But one of the differences. <coughs> yeah, but it, the, we'd see it because because the, it's really just a, uh, like an inch away from the camera, and you can tell it's well, it, it, it's you straight. Yeah. Feedback through the whole course, whether yeah. 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 Involved or not, so yeah. yeah. There's there's lots of other signals. It's really difficult. It's difficult to cheat this system. You could. You'd have to. Be, but you'd have to be really good at it. And if you're that really good at it, then I'd, you know, they'll give you a theatrical degree or something. <laughs> Can I just say, say this, and I'll answer these questions. Um, so you notice that these questions now, it says, um, explain the role of phospholipids, for example. That's really different from a multiple choice question. Now you've got to know, you've got to know it. Whereas before, it's you've, when you do a multiple choice test, you've just got to be able to recognize it. Right, students? I mean, you, you, it's, you kind of, you, 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 you revise 
tactically based on how much you can cram into your head and how much you think will come out during a test. And really, you're not really learning it all. What you're doing is learning enough so that you could answer it if you saw it. Right, well, that's why I did it. But anyway, so, but now the students are required to know it. They can't get away from knowing it. Um, but they only have to do seven at a time. So instead of having these big multiple choice um, um, exams at the end or in the middle, each week they're getting these eight to ten questions that they're responsible to know the answers to. So I personally think this is a better assessment method anyway, um, but it also um, makes sure that they're the ones doing it. So go ahead and then. So the first semester, we, did, we sent a survey out, and I allowed the students to, I set up the survey so they could be as mean as, you know, the, I, I set it up that way. And I was actually surprised. I thought we'd have more negativity than we did, because there, there was a lot of technical problems. Um, we were using a new set of technology, not the one we'd used here, we, um, and there were issues. Some students had problems the whole way through the semester. But um, the, the response was maybe, a, uh, maybe like 3% of the students said, I didn't like it, I don't want to do it again. <coughs> The whole, the, all of the rest said, I'm happy doing it this way, for various reasons. But they all, they all said some really good things. They said they all learned from other students, which I was really happy about. That, that, that was really pleasing. Um, and they, they all um, said that they had a good relationship. They, uh, in some of our classes, we didn't make them do much with other, much with other students. So that, so, but they, they felt the connection, but we can do a lot better with that. But the answer is no, it was all positive. And it was more positive than I thought it would be in, a, in the first semester of a brand new program. So I was quite pleased. Um, most of the students that were taking the course the on campus, so, uh, That's a great point that I'm going to have to do in about, uh, in about a millisecond. The, the, the objective of BYU Hawaii is, is twofold. They want to have 20% of their on-campus credits taught by online classes. This is, um, this is part of their cost-effectiveness cost measures they have to bring in to, to make the university sustainable in the long term. And that allows students to take more credits in the semester because they have flexible options, classes they can do in, the, you know, in other times other than their daily schedule. And the second one is um, helping students prepare to come to university for various reasons. So that's, that's students who are not even on campus. Um, this semester, we have 400 students on campus and 160-odd in, in foreign countries, most of them in Mongolia. Go ahead. What about uh, taking all of these great things about the online class and integrating it to the live version? So it's a blended environment. I took a linguistics class that right. was very similar to this. And I thought it was a great class just because it was a linguistics class right. where we had to go and record ourselves Spain, like saying the Spanish Right. Uh, according to the symbols, right. we were tested like this, and yeah. we, got video, we got audio and video responses that's from the professor and so forth, but like applying that to all these other subjects. That's, that's a great question. Um, in fact, the second semester we did this, we did both a face-to-face -face and, so I did a blended and an online version, mm -hmm. and the students loved the, the blended. That's probably, if you're on campus, <coughs> that's, that's, that's a better solution, probably. Um, and then in Hawaii, uh, there's one professor who's actually uh, the person I report to, who was the Associate Academic Vice President, he's teaching one class, and he asked me, could I use this in my class? And what he said was this, is my students are not preparing for class, they're not reading. So when they come, they're not, they're not ready for a discussion. Could I have them do a video of, 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 uh, of what, telling me what, you know, some things about what they've read before they come to class? So we set up for him, and he absolutely loves it. So all the students are required to give an analysis of the reading before they even come to class, and 40% of their grade in the semester is based on these ana analyses. So they're going to do it. And he thinks it's great. And then another professor saw it and said, wow, this is fantastic. I'd like to do it. Which is really interesting because when we say online, professors are typically, ooh, I don't like that idea. Um, but, then, but, but when they see this as a solution for some of the face-to-face -face issues, all of a sudden this technology is really, really welcome. So yeah, that, that's a good point. And our, our academic vice president, his, his, he, he's told me his favorite uh, model of education is, bl is blended. So that's something we'll, we'll be looking into. Great question. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we're working very closely to get. Uh, in fact, we have a meeting um, um, at the church office buildings on Monday, and then then me and the academic vice president from BYU Hawaii are going to Idaho, and we've, we've got a lot of collaboration going on. It needs to be recognised we have different styles of, of systems for various reasons. Independent study is is totally different to Idaho and and Hawaii because they are independent study. They're, they're designed to, for students to take a class when, whenever they want to. They're not designed for a program. 
So um, what uh, Justin Johansson has told me is when they survey their, 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 their clients, their clients don't want interaction. That's not what they're after. They want to get a class and get it done. Um, but what I'm talking about is a program. So we want to bring students through a cohort, and that's a whole different concept, and we want them to have this inter in interrelationship. But nobody else is doing <coughs> this, this asynchronous video style. So in Hawaii, we think this is the way we can, especially, all, the, the other thing is, is we've got an environment where we've got students, now we've got students all over the world, pretty much in every single time zone, and, and, it's, and it's rapidly growing, because it's also very cheap. We've been able to get the, the, the cost down. To, we have a subsidized cost, um, for, the, for the, the poorer countries down to $10 a credit. And so, so what we're doing is enabling them to get education at an American degree level for very low cost. But even the U.S. students are only charged $50 a credit. And, and the reason is, is the cost effectiveness of the tutor model. So I told you about the design. We take the design from a teacher. We put it into an online class. But then we employ, and the, teacher, the professor is the one who selects the tutor. We kind of both do. They select them based on their competence in, in, the, in the topic. And I select them based on this, uh, this personality that I want them to have. That's, that's what I'm actually looking for. And I try and recruit students who have this, this empathy, and they smile, and, and it's believable. And, and so anyway, so the tutor then takes on 100 students each to do uh, this feedback for every week. Sounds like a lot. If you asked a, t a professor to do it, it wouldn't be very feasible because they have so many other things to do. But a tutor, you know, I've hired, the, hired them, and I can say, you, will sit, you know, I can train them to sit in their desk like a, like a customer support place, and this is their routine. This is what they do. And so they can go through 100 students quite easily and give them their, their, their feedback. And, and what's really interesting about it, they take it really seriously. So in the first semester, I actually had to tone them down. So in biology, where the tutor was giving seven-minute responses to every student, that's, that's a lot. Seven minutes is a, is, is a long try at some time. Go back and get your webcam and talk for seven minutes about something. And, um, um, well, I'm just getting warmed up after seven minutes. But, you know, most people... Um, but I've tried it. When I've tried tests to see how, how large a video gets for a minute, and I, d and I don't have a particular topic, it's really hard to do that. Um, but she was giving really detailed feedback. Everything they said, even if they were saying, asking questions that were outside of the topic, she was giving really detailed responses. Um, not as good as a professor could give, obviously, but she was giving more than a professor would have time to give. So ultimately, it's a good question is, which is better? Um, I don't know. I, I, professors would, uh, at BYU Hawaii, have one opinion, and I'm, 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 I'm open-minded about that. I think in some, in some circumstances, for general education level classes, <coughs> Uh, and I'm only talking about general education level classes, I think the feedback from the tutor is, is superior, not in its overall quality, but in what the student gets out of it, because two things happen. One, it's a peer talking to them in the language that they comprehend. A lot of and professors recognize this, and there's, there's, there's lots of literature on it, that once you've been doing something for 40 years, it's really hard to, to, to understand what it's like not to know it. So the language you use is... It's, a student who's just learnt it uses different language to, to pass it on to a student than a teacher would do. And that's a fairly obvi obvious principle. So it has those advantages. Um, so it's the 100 students per tutor that allows us the cost of, and as a student doing it, that's, that's the cost effective part, and that's how we can get the price down. Andy. Why don't you pitch broadband to use this? What coverage does that give you to the Pacific Rim? That's, that's pretty much the whole world these days. There's very few left. There's, they've basically got very low broadband. There's not many people left on dial-up speeds. But they're, they're on a, like, 150K or something like that. In Mongolia, if you're in an um, internet cafe, which most of them have to go to, it, it's just about feasible. Oh, it's not feasible. If they use webcams, it's feasible. But we actually have, um, I've investigated a lot of other technologies where they can use these portable videos. This is kind of like a, um, yeah, but it's not. This is a, these cost $60, and I think they're better. But um, this is uh, made by RCA. It's called Small Wonder. And this, so it's got this screen on it that you can flip round, which basically means I can watch myself as I'm being recorded like you can when you're doing webcam, and that's a big difference. And so you, this is just really simple. You, you turn it on, you press record, you record, you stop, and then you plug it in with a USB cable right there to your, to your computer. And as long as students don't have to make sure they can make that small, they can go around, as long as they know what their assignments are, they can do their assignments during the week, and then they can go to the internet cafe and upload them. And... Uh, and I've been experimenting with all sorts of technology like this. We sent out 13 of these to Mongolia. Um, when we first um, sent out information about the program, there was a huge response from Mongolia, where they have 10,000 members of the church, but it's so new that it's only 10 years old, they're all young adults. And they're all they're highly motivated and, and mostly pretty well-educated people, but in their country, if you get an American degree or a Western degree, you can quadruple your salary. So the 
same job. It's, it's a very strange situation. So they all want to come and get a degree from BYU Hawaii. So as soon as we started the program, we were flooded with requests. That's why, so we haven't really marketed very much to anybody else because we're still dealing with setting up with, with, with them. So we have about 160 in-country students and about 90% are from Mongolia. And, and do I've, you register them just as an online student? Yes. Yeah, they, they're, they're getting uh, a transcript. The credits are getting onto a tra transcript, but they're not uh, a degree-seeking student. So at some point, they have to come to campus and finish. Right now, the rule is you have to do th you have you, you have to do 30 credits on campus, and I'm and I'm trying to change that. Um, in fact, it, it's already changing because BYU Idaho has got has already got a pilot plan, um, plan approved to do a thing called Pathways, where students can study. They can do their work in an in, uh, institute building w w with a missionary couple that's called to, to bring groups together, and that that they can eventually progress to do, doing a fully online degree without ever coming to campus. Um, so the kind of the notion of not being on campus but still um, getting the stuff you get if you're on campus is out there. We're trying to find clever ways. One of the ways I'm su I've suggested is how about we go to them and we take three professors to, to a country for two weeks, one, you know, once a year, and we gather them together and we give them a really intense experience. We're going to do a pilot this year in Mongolia probably with basically a two-week, seven-credit experience, um, three, cla three classes, and we're going to... Yep. Yeah.